Good day, lords and ladies, and welcome to the last spell, a Cornus Let's Play series. Now, I have covered this game a couple of times on my channel, the Cornus First Look, but as of the 9th of March, which is yesterday, um, the game is out of early access and into full release. So, time to dive in and have a look. The game was developed by Istar um, Games and published by the Arcade Crew. So, let us dive into a new campaign. A lot has changed since I last played this, so it's going to be as much a surprise for you as it is to me. War. For centuries, the world was engulfed in never-ending strife and chaos. Elves fighting dwarves, dwarves fighting humans, orcs fighting everyone. The common folk were bled dry, misery, famine, plague. Secluded in his tower, researching forbidding magic secrets. The arts mage Hieronymus Cellar made an extraordinary discovery. Wild, unknown words of power to harness tremendous forces. Because being an, ac an academic in isolation never went bad for anyone when left to their own devices without, without government oversight. A ritual of mass destruction, able to obliterate any city in one strike. So basically, for those of you who are wondering, it's the equivalent of a magical, a magical nuclear weapon. Hoping to end all wars, he cast a spell on Elthven. Elthven. A small enemy village. A gigantic dark ball of purple flames fell from the sky and smashed into the town centre. Leaving only ruins, lifeless bodies and purple flames. The whole royal family of a neighbouring kingdom was present at that time. They all died. The king, mad with grief, ordered the military to research this new magic. He made his mages unleash hell on the closest major city. Several hundred thousand died. Every kingdom sought the purple magic. Alliances were set in motion. The sky was a constant. The sky was constantly flashing purple, flashing purple bursts. Thundering blasts were heard every hour. War was no more. Only annihilation. There was no turning back. At some point, the explosion stopped. A resounding silence. An ominous mist started to. Ad adjurate, aggregate around the remaining cities. Aggregate, I should say. Small groups of survivors gathered. The surrounding mist was thickening. At night, they had to defend against ghastly monsters. They called them Chloras. A fighter simply known as the Commander took charge. The fences were rebuilt, and some havens emerged from the chaos. Most mages were hanged, or worse, in retribution. Some of them, fearing for their lives, tried to find an answer. They found a way. A spell. The last spell. They devised a complex, rich, complex rituals to cleanse the corrupted runic nexus. The goals were simple, yet nearly impossible. Channel enough energy to break the remaining seals of magic, and banish all magic from this world forever. But when, but when comes the night, terrifying mutated creatures appear. They come out of the mist to kill. 
The survivor's only hope is to fight night after night and protect these mages at any cost until the last spell is cast. And that is the story of the last spell. Um, that and the narration going in. Um, I always felt quite sad for the um, the setting of the last spell. Like, the mages really get a bad hand, which is that, yes, one of them does basically invent the equivalent of magical nuclear weapons, but it's the fact that it is like the people in power, the people that actually have all the political power, that are the ones that force them to use them. And so everyone turns on the mages when it's really just the people in power who's at fault. Um, it drives them to, to basically remove all magic from the world as a result. Which is never... The thing is, like, this setting reminds me a lot of a setting called Dark Sun. Um, from Which is basically like a setting developed in the D&D uh, &D sort of rule set. Where the world is basically dying as a result of a magical... Um, like, as a result of a magical war. And you're basically left with like the blasted, charred remains of a world that is scarred heavily by magic, magical conflict. This reminds me a lot of it, though they are actually still better off slightly than the Dark Sun universe, where I believe even stuff like metal is considered to be a uh, high-end, valuable like resource. Most people fight each other with like wooden, wooden bone and stone weapons. And if you have, like, a metal sword, you're considered to be sort of, like, a champion of men. But let's get back to the game. Defend the last bastion of humanity with your your heroes. While the mages try to ban us all magic, exterminate the phoenix monsters by night, and rebuild your battered city defenses by day. Protect the magic circle night after night until the magic breaks the seal. Well, the mages break the seal. Um, the haven is lost if the magic circle is destroyed before the heroes are dead. During the day phase, position your heroes by placing them just outside the city. You can move using um, A, W, S, and D keys, or the arrow keys, and you can gram camera, um, camera grip with, or with mouse free button. The direction of incoming horde is shown in the cam, um, commander journal, which is here. So if you want to. Yeah, we can normally, you can normally rotate, but unfortunately, like, my mouse is playing up. I need to get a new mouse, really, to be honest. Um, unfortunately. So who do we have? We've got Leonard, Leonard, who is basically dual-wielding wands, which eh, I'm not a massive fan of. We've got a, uh, Kaya, who is basically a ranger, well, range unit, I should say. She was using a wooden short bow. And we've got uh, Claria. Clara? Clara. Claria. Claria. Um, which is basically using an axe and a shield. Okay. So they're coming from down here. This is basically like beginner's guide to how to play this game. But since a lot has changed, we shall dive in and see what we've got. So we do want to basically keep uh, the enemy away from us as long as possible. Um, so we'll keep them down there. With her short bow, her, we, we haven't got a great range on her abilities, unfortunately. Um, and her primary attack is actually fairly... It's not too bad. So basically how this game works, it's, it's basically a turn-based tactics game with city management built in. So if you look at um, the attack panel on a hover over a particular attack axe, and you can see basically range damage, and it shows you how, like, how much resource it takes to use, the range of it, how many tiles are affected. So if I so for this one here, it's basically um, range of 1 to 4, targets 1, targets 1, while well, this one is basically uh, AOE, you can see it. In the uh, tight volley box, you can see the areas that are affected by it. It's the same for the fighter. Um, you can see how many squares are affected. 
what does the mage have? Let's see. Basic magical damage. Restoration, which are both nice to have. Magic missile. No, it's not bad, actually. So f he's fairly actually good. He's fairly good range. Um, there are sort of also stuff like uh, character customization. All the characters in the game will have traits, both negative and positive. For example, Leyla, um, Leyland, Leyland is basically a trapper, which basically gives him better isolation, which is, if I remember correctly, applied down to deal to isolated targets. He's better at taking out single targets or lone targets. Um, health regen is nice, but he's got lower dodge. He has less health, which is not great. But he has more movement points. While in comparison, Clara is a mercenary, so she gets basically damage across the board, which is nice, but she has less health and she has less dodge, which is not great for a melee fighter. Kaya is a sentry, so she has a lot less movement points, but she has a lot more she gets, gets a bit more range damage, a bit more mana, less armor, more range damage. Okay, so not great abilities to be honest. And you can customize them. You can go in uh, feminine, masculine, any. You can change their clothing, their details, that kind of thing. Hair color, background colors, all that kind of stuff, which is very nice. Um, but I'm happy with what we have here. Uh, none of them have leveled up. There's also a perk system. We'll go into more of it once we get in. But all you have to remember, this is how much health you get. This is how much health regen you get at the end of of, a t of basically every day. So you don't get health refilled automatically. It sort of grows back. So if your people take too much health damage, they're going to be suffering it. Same with mana. Energy is always restored. Um, and move is how much move you can turn. Um, you do a, a turn, basically. And then you have all your stats here. It's quite an in-depth system, but we'll dive into it. So we've got them all moved to position. Let's see what we're facing. I'm going to try and keep them away from our defenses for as long as possible. Because these things will basically keep them funneled in. And we're trying to keep them from breaking into the city. So let's see what we get. Close the doors. I don't want to die. Okay. Okay. During the night, repel monsters until they are all dead. Moving your heroes and using their skills in order you like. Yeah, any hero available skills depends on the gear they are equipped with. So basically, all the weapons in this game, like the skills that you have, are all linked to your weapons, not your characters. So depending on what equipment you give them is basically what skills they have. So when you go and pick up an item in a shop, look at it to see what skills are tied to it and if you're interested. Okay, that will basically give us a buff. Uh, increases our armor, which is nice. Armor is basically used to basically uh, help mitigate damage. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly where the armor counter is. If you look at the character sheet. Uh, da -da 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 armor. Yeah, see. Protective layer, preventing damage loss. Fully restored every turn. So, for example, this person here has blocked because they got sealed, but they also have armor which um, allows them to tank a bit, I believe. They should have some gear. Oh no, that doesn't really give a lot. Fantastic, it's all dodge. Uh, fantastic, okay. So these guys here, your basic crawlers and a kindled. Ugh. The mist has strange effects on these crawlers, they are slower, being consumed by bright flame and will become ethereal in the process, making them more resistant to physical and projectiles. Okay, so these guys are basically resistant to physical damage. We had to hit them with magic right here. So they're going to push up here. And as you can see here, we have a turn order and how many things we have to kill. And this is how City Panic works. Um, City Panic works by... Filling up bars, the more panic there is, the less rewards you have. So we want to keep it as low as possible. Um, I really don't want to move her too much. If I can help it. Um, but at the same time... 
I do want to start punishing the undead. So if we move her up to here, which will take a bit of our energy, any movement is can it's cancelable just until you cast a skill. So basically, you can always do the undo button, like this, which will take her back to here, um, which will allow you to basically redo your turn as long as you don't spend an action to do it. So for example, here, let's spend this. We can do this. That's not a great combination. We can just out of range. But let's start by shooting these guys. So we killed some of them and that one is injured and has lost air. It's bleeding and it's losing some health and we'll pull her back. You can also change facing uh, and open turbo speed as well to speed up the game and all that kind of stuff. Right, so... With her, I don't really want to do anything. With him... He's got okay magical generation. But he's a single... He's a single buff character, so that's not great. Right. Let's move him to here. And just start doing a bit of damage. So we're killing them, but not enough. I'm going to leave. I'm going to get her to basically buff up her. Oh, she's only got dodge. She's only got the armor. Fantastic. Right. I don't want to pull too far out. Because if we pull too far out, we're going to leave ourselves open for trouble. So they're going to get to basically about this line. So I can pull her forward slightly. And get her dodge up and then we'll end the turn. So they're going to keep pouring out of the mist. Health and mana are not fully restored every day. Each hero's health regen and mana regen are attributes. And are so next to the health and mana indicator. When units' health goes under a certain threshold, they become wounded, and inf the, the inflicted negative effects are specific to the unit's type. Hero, Claw, Splitter. Hover over the blood droplet icon under a unit's health bar to discover the, eff the effects. So, for example, this person here is wounded. As you can see, negative movement, negative total damage. Um, okay, but we've still got a ton of enemies coming. So how many we've got left to kill isn't the same. Okay. So we're getting back mana regen of six. So we're going to hit six enemies here. Let's fire that one there. And that should do us a bit of help. And we can start doing a bit of damage. Yeah, it's not great, unfortunately, because these guys are pretty resistant. Okay. With them, yeah, they're blocking my line of sight, unfortunately. That's basically, if I move this person here. Give him a, a touch of damage, which is fine. Bash. Crush. It's not too bad. But my movement isn't great. I need to basically keep keeping... Keeping my movement down. Because these guys are going to keep... Pushing up. That person's going to be a pain, though. So. Restore this person for some movement. Move out to here. We do need to start 
getting rid of some enemies. We can cast it multiple times as well. So we can go once, twice. There we go. When you have no action points left on your hero or you're done with your turn, hit the end turn button. Yeah, basically. And then we'll store your, your energy and your movement every turn. Okay. So I probably want to start trying to save a bit of my mana. We will pull back a little bit. And you can pull back a little bit as well. This is fine. Keep your dodge up just in case. You're fine. Yeah, so press the wrong button. They're gonna keep pushing up. There's just so many of them. Select enemies to see their skills and attributes and where they might move to. Okay. So it's all just the basic stuff, to be honest. Now they're getting closer, though, we do have to be on the ball. Um, what damage type is this? It's just straight range damage. It won't do a ton against those guys. So we need to really focus down and that was a waste my man is going down for him so we had to be careful as well um okay this person though is quite good at what they do and taking out a lot of the undead so but they don't have a lot of aoe um, so they need to move up. <laughs> they can do that, which gives some smash back, which is nice. Um, but I don't want to send them in too deep, because if we send them in too deep, they're not going to be able to get out again. And his buff ability needs to be fairly... And I actually can do it. It's not too bad. So that person can get that done. They got their movement back a bit. So we want to basically... Where do I want to step in? That person does a pain. Because if, if these two... I suppose I could sit there... Well, let's let's go in deep into the horde. Which will help us a bit and then we can pull out again. That's done. So it gives you a bit more time to fall back. These guys are going to start to get to our defenses. It's not great, but it's better than nothing. still got enough movement for you to basically get to here so we can get to here and I want to basically take care of the ones that have magical resistance realistically speaking and probably take a smack at you as well and then fall back your magic is fine three four I don't want to overtax you too much, to be honest. So let's just pick off the ones. Ah, missed. That's a shame. There we go. Let's just try and pick off the ones you can. You haven't got a ton of movement either. So let's get your. Let's just brace. And end our turn. There's 39 of them left, and they are still coming. Okay. And enemies within your haven or damage its buildings and walls will cause panic. At the end of the night, panic levels will be determined your reward. So that's the same thing. 
probably want to hold off using uh, using any more mana. Just try and get our mana to sort of regen the bits. So that's going to be hard, but not impossible. Um, get down here. We stunned a lot of them. Bad positioning on my part, unfortunately. Um, do I want to risk it again? No, because it's not going to be that great. Okay. Let's... These guys are all injured and slowed, so it's these ones here. And they've been knocked down a bit. You can punch this guy in the head. He's still got a bit of movement, but his movement is gone, as is his. That guy's going to be a pain, because we can only take those guys out with magic. So any of the magical dudes need to be basically done by us, by this guy. Um, our reserves aren't great either. So they've got a bit of movement up. Do I want to basically pop another one? Might be worth it. Yeah. That's going to lead them open for a bit of damage, but a lot of the enemies are blocked, so they have problems getting to us. That one won't, though, so that one needs to go. I mean, we could push up. Well, Parasol isn't great. I don't want to waste any more mana than I have to, to be honest. Um, these are guys are going to push up, but we can... Keep them relatively contained. You're out of... You've got a bit of charge left, but that's fine. Let's just start poking away at the ones that we haven't actually really hurt. Move here. And we can start hitting any that are... Any that are annoying. So they're going to push up to here. It's fine. Okay, let's end the turn. Okay. Once again. Get rid of the ones that we can't easily deal with. Now these ones are pushing up to the fences, okay. Let's go... ...like that, which will slow them down a bit. These ones are still pushing up. Um... Just trying to save my energy for as much for as long as I can, really. Boost that, but only, uh, that's not a great roll. Okay, with two energy, I don't want to risk it. Right. Her mana is okay, but even so, I don't really want to put... I'd rather just save my damage and just um, use her normal attacks to pick off ones that can still move. Okay. 
They're pushing up. Right. Can I rotate? I could, there used to be a way to rotating this spell circles. Hold on, let me just check the options. Controls. Up, down, yeah, that's fine. Camera, that's fine. General. Rotate skill, yeah. So, we do this. This is F for rotate skill. Maybe it hasn't unlocked yet in the tutorial. There's definitely... Skill rotation on diagonals. Okay. Ah, okay. Just trying to keep them blocked behind foes. And who can move up to support? That's the question. Okay. So they've got a couple, we've got a couple of diag diagonal attacks left. That person's got to get to the wall, which I'm not happy about. So let's get down there. <laughs> and missed with that attack, that's unfortunate. Um... That person's still up. None of them are going to get to the wall, though, which is not a major concern of mine. Get that up. And we will start cleaning out the ones that can be a pain. It's all it's about action economy management. Okay. Now we can go in and wreck face. There we go. So they're all dead. Another night survived. We leveled up. Which is lovely. Everyone got various amounts of kills, which I don't believe kills count. Well, it actually does count towards XP. Okay. Shared experience. But we all got around the same amount of kills. No HPs. No HP lost. No one dead. S class result. Fantastic. And for our resources. They didn't reach the city. Night one, well, that was easy. So we got lots of gold, lots of building material, and an additional free item. And one ticker went up. During the production phase, you can rebuild the Haven Hunt your heroes. The Commander's Journal serves as a reminder of everything you can do. Multiple resources are available in your Haven. Gold is used for building structures and buying equipment. With materials are used for defenses. Workers are used to trigger the active, active abilities of some buildings and replenish every day. So basically, is that you have free resources, re, free resources. You have gold, you've got building materials, and you've got citizens. The citizens are basically a limited resource. Up here, as you can see, that you use to basically activate buildings' abilities. Stone is used for basically building defenses and buildings, and gold is, gold is used to buying gear and upgrading buildings and recruiting additional heroes later on in the game. So, we have a whole host of things to run through here in the Commander's Journal. Um, normally my advice is to go from the top down, so let's start with our character level up. So Claire has leveled up. 
Um, the way that level, up, level ups work is every level you get um, a primary attribute perk that you can pick. Um, since she is currently our fighter, either having and they come in they come in various varieties. They are uncommon, common. Well, they're common, uncommon, and rare. She hasn't got a ton of health, which for a fighter is relatively bad. Um, so I am going to grab the health one, which is fantastic. And then you've got a secondary attribute that you can increase. Um, so daily mana regen, not bad. Uh, skill range increase would be pretty good. Um, reliability going up is nice as well. The daily health regen for a fighter is really great. So it goes up from 11 to 31, which means that she can take a bit of damage to her health and re-basically re regain it so we can don't have to be too cautious with her. Building your own combined passive abilities to further specialize the playstyle of your heroes. Heroes are, have varying perk trees, so check them out carefully. Heroes gain one perk per level up to level 11. If you want to plan ahead, you can pin the side perk as a reminder. Okay, so she has one perk point. We can do sprint, unlock the sprint skill, allowing to restore movement points in exchange for some health, which is not too bad. Uh, we can get mana growth, uh, per perseverance, every two attacks from a hero dodge is added, which is not bad. We can get unlocks the cheer ability, unlocks the cheer allows buff the damage of an ally, unlocks the quick reload skill, allowing to restore one uh, movement point. All skills of the current weapon set gives you back one uh, uh, action point per limit to all skills of the current weapon set. That's not too bad. Use per night free. So that's actually not too bad, actually, for her. Armor is increased by 110 of the use of the hero's daily health regen. So that's actually pretty good. I will grab that for her, I think. She's got relatively... If we're going tank and we build her a tank in mind, that would be pretty good to have for her. That's her done. Kaya. Level up. Increase the primary secondary attribute of your heroes. Yeah, okay. So let's level her up. Um, movement up would be great for her. Accuracy would be really good. So let's grab the accuracy. Armor's nice, but accuracy for ranged units is really important. You can also do rerolls if there's nothing that you want. Um, poison damage. We haven't got anything that does poison damage. Um, magic damage. Optimization. Multiplied um, applied the damage of dealing targets with negative attributes. Which is always useful, but not great. We can do a reroll. Let's do that. Let's see what we get. It does sort down how many options you get. XP gain, daily health regen, or momentum. That's actually not too bad. That's a pretty good one to get. Uncommon, a bit of extra experience if she lives up quicker, but I get the health regen. And then for traits. Let's see. Leapfrog. Not, it's increased, plus one to range, which is also nice. Upgrades the jump skill. Minus one movement cost, plus one to range, but her movement isn't great. Allowed some more skill usage. That's not too bad. Cheer. Steady aim. As long as the hero doesn't move during this turn, that's actually pretty good. So if we keep her in the back and keep her firing, she's a pretty good sniper. And then we have Leyland, who isn't going to be great. I need to get his mana pool up. So, common eh, health. That's actually pretty good for him because his health is terrible. Because he's got like penalties from like weakness and stuff. But I would like to have some more mana, or at least mana re regeneration for him. Ugh. Damage, a straight up damage modifier actually isn't pretty isn't bad. But uncommon having increased dodge isn't too bad either. What is where is dodge is coming from? From the gear mostly. So that's not great. His base damage. I'll go with the uh, go with that, and then secondary uh, mana re uh, daily mana regen is not too bad actually. 
physical damage, stun chance. Let's go for another reroll. It's not great. I'm not gonna lie. I should have gone for the mana re regeneration. Reliability isn't bad. Um, especially for mages. So getting his reliability up increases minimum damage of all attacks. At 100%, the attack will always deal max damage. So that's not too bad for him to increase his basic damage straight up. And for perks, yeah, just increasing the mana is not too bad. Uh, nothing here. We're probably going to go down that spell tree. Give him a bit more mana. It doesn't help with mana regen, unfortunately. But they have all been leveled up. Let's grab our awards. We get one free award, which is a weapon. So what's this? It's an epic level bow. Wooden short bow. So it's the same... It's the same... Um, it's the same damage and everything, but it has some attributes to it. Which is that... Has more block, more dodge, more momentum, a bit more crit. Okay. Or we can get a suit of armor for them, reduces their movement point by one. Extra health, extra critical. Some common medium armor. No, I think I think I am gonna grab the bow. It's pretty much like just a straight up upgrade. So let's, we've got a bit of money. We can go and buy some gear. Um, the bodies also stay on the map, as I should say, as well. So all the bodies you kill will remain rotting on the map as the knight comes by. And we have a, quite a few knights because we only got one mage. So... Is there anything we want to build? The only thing we can build, realistically, is a mana well. Which isn't so bad. Is there anything particular in the in the shop that we want to buy? Items are two elements that define their power. Levels define the value of the attributes and damage is represented by the Roman numeral at the bottom of the icon. Um, and the plus X in the name. And can go up to five. Rarity adds random bonuses. Okay. So. It's got to be level one gear. I need to get some armor on my uh, on my fighter realistically. Um, I got a bit of money, but I don't want to spend too much. It's consumables, accuracy, health. I'd love to have something that gave a bit more. Something that give a bit more damage. Um, or at least movement would be lovely to see. Getting that for the mage would be good. Uh, so we could get that. Probably going to get the armor. Reduce the movement a little bit so we're going to be a bit worse. But having armor would be great for the fighter. Health regen. Like, what are my party members, like, rocking gear-wise? Basic gear, realistically speaking. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's grab, we'll grab this. Um, one plus one is nice, but it's expensive for what it is.
grab the helmet. That's probably all we can realistically do if I want to build anything. So I want to get the mana well. Because the mana well will help us basically get some things restored. I want to keep it not too close, but at the same time not blocking access ways. So that's being that's being built. So we can send a worker to Gantz plus maximum mana. One use per production phase. Restore mana to all the heroes. Plus six to the target hero. No, I'm going to use restore eight mana to all heroes. Yeah. Do that so all our mana comes back up. And with the 20 that we have left, can't get a lot of things. Um, we could sell the bow. That is always an option. Okay, yeah. Heroes can have two different weapon sets. Can swap freely between them at any time, even during combat. Any attributes, modifiers granted by the equipment is always applied, even if the weapon is not set to the current active. active. So one of the things this game does do is that it makes you basically carry multiple weapons and change your playing style. Consumable item potion scrolls do not disappear when they are used. Instead, they have a limited number of uses per night and fully refill at the start of your production phase. Okay, so first off... Let's get that on her. Her movement goes down from 8 to 6, but I love how all the gear is represented. Gives us a nice amount of armor, though, which is good. Um, which plays into our perks, which is great. Uh, you can have... This is just a straight-up increase for you, so we can sell that bow. Um, we can sell some bits and pieces as well. For you, you can have the helmet, which will give you health received and daily mana regen. No, healing received. It's not too big, but I want the daily, because he's a mage, he's supposed to have good daily mana regen. Um, because he's going to be firing a lot of spells. We could give them the, you the bow as well as a second weapon set. Hmm. Or we can sell it for a bit of extra cash. That's that's something you can do. So we could go. Actually, what would we get out of it? We could get that, which is accuracy. Could be useful. Yeah, let's let's do that. We just get straight up damage. So basically with this, we're paying for extra health and extra health regen. Um, that is a bit better. That actually could be good for her. Baron's caped. Extra damage and reliability. It's a shame it's not actually displayed on the model. Oh, uh, that's a pity. But yeah, so her reliability goes up. A bit of extra damage is always nice as well. But 12 gold left. Nothing you can get for 12 gold besides basic gear. Which are basically pants, which we don't need. Um... We can't build anything either. Yeah. Temples and all that stuff we can we can put in. Yeah, temple increasing max health, that's already in, and a shop is already in. So all we could do is put in a mana well. Those things are done. So what do we want to build? With the defenses we have, nothing's coming from this end. We could put in some more barricades. Um, improve the wooden walls. 
wouldn't be too bad. Um, reinforced wooden walls would be helpful, and a wooden gate. Um, that actually might not be too bad of an idea, to be honest. Um, like, fortify this area. So we have, like, a fallback route, so if they're trying to get through, and just keeps them a bit further out of the settlement. So I think they can only come through this way and this way. Yeah. Or we could start fortifying the walls here, but that's only going to be flying enemies, unfortunately. We can get over the walls. Um... But on some more palisades would also not be too much of a bad thing. Like bottleneck them into basically coming through certain ways. Like if you can like if we can limit their um their flow, it's not too bad. Yeah. That's a block line of sight. You could start reinforcing the walls a bit here. Wouldn't be too bad. And what? Put a gate in, maybe? Um, it's always so hard to choose. Because eventually, what will happen is that the enemy will switch and they will start coming from both directions. So. Fortified disc, because eventually they will break through the stockade. Eventually, given enough time. So having these things here would help us hold this area a bit longer. And funnel them in through like choke holds. No choke points. Um it's not too bad. We got one worker available. Boost health, boost mana. So yeah, we can use the that. We can't use it there. We'd also use them to basically, if you had workers, you can like rip down buildings to get extra resources, um, which is not a bad thing. So scavenging for a bit of extra gold, for more building materials. Nothing in the shop we want for twenty four, is there? You get the necklace. Not a bad thing to get. There we go. That's... Actually, wait, that's going to go on there, isn't it? Ah, uh, nuts. Did not think of that. Okay. Yeah, it's not great. A bit of extra health and some health regen. Not too bad. Um, but yeah, so this is how the last spell basically works. I know this episode has been a bit slow with just talking about stuff and getting everything sort of ready. But they are pushing up, so they can be coming from this direction again. A bit, we have a couple more building materials left, I suppose we can splurge. Um... Like, block off some of the more easy avenues of approach. And just sort of give us a bit more time. That should work. But yeah, so we got through uh, day one. The thing about this game is that you are going to die. Um, it is just how it is. So... These heroes hopefully will last long enough to give us some nice rewards, but we're probably going to die eventually because eventually what will happen is that they'll come from multiple directions and you're going to have to be running around. And uh, the more you play, the more um, bonuses you get. So it expects you to, to die a lot. So sometimes I may off camera basically do a little bit of grinding just to sort of push things forward, but it depends. I'll see how I feel and how fast we can put the push to game. We can also just increase the speed as well. 
Um, but that's been the first episode of The Last Spell, full release, and I will see you all again next time, folks. Goodbye.